Hey guys, today I'll be showing you another project I've been working on. And uh, this is a 1973 Mini Moog all the way from Australia. And uh, this video is also for Evan who owns this Mini Moog. So Evan, I'm just going to be giving you an overview of your Mini Moog here. Uh, but also guys, there's some things in this particular Mini Moog that might be of interest to some of you out there that like to use external CV with your Mini Moog. Um, the Mini Moogs and early Moogs in general uh, struggle with using one volt per octave signals. Even though it's a one volt per octave synthesizer, uh, Moog used a system called the Open Interface, which was a little different than what you find with uh, other synthesizers. And what you would have to do originally when you plug this thing into another synthesizer, we'll use a polymoog for example. Okay, you'd hit the lowest note of the polymoog, and the lowest note is an E note. So what you do, you'd hit the E note of your mini moog, and then while hitting the lowest note, you'd use your tune knob to tune the low end for zero beating. Then you'd hit the highest note, and then in the polymoog, there's actually a scale knob. So you'd hit the highest note of the polymoog, and then use the scaling knob on the uh, polymoog to adjust the high note uh, for zero beating against the polymook. And you just repeat this until you got low end and high end without any beating, where they're perfectly in tune with each other. Fine and great when you're using Moogs, uh, but what if you want to use something like MPU 101 or, or a Roland or you know some other synth to control your, uh, your mini Moog? Well, it don't really work that well. Because what you have to do, you have to do the same note reference, but you don't have that scale pot. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to build a special cable with a 10k pot uh, between your CV line, you'd hit the lowest note of your, for example, use the ProMars over there. I think it starts with uh, Elf. So you'd hit the Elf note of your Mini Moog, Elf noted that. Uh, use a tune knob to ting, uh, bring that in. Hit the highest note and you'd use that, that pot that was in your wire to set the, uh, the tuning. That sounds great on paper, but when you actually start playing with it, you find that tracking problems exist. Uh, tracking problems within other octave ranges start to show issues and uh, that's where the story kind of ends as far as really accurate uh, you know control now keep in mind if you're using a Kenton MIDI controller or something like that they already have the compensation uh, uh, stuff inside where you can actually go in there and set things up and, and you can do uh, compensation for octaves and all that kind of stuff different story uh, this is if you're really just wanting to use CV, uh, like an old system setup. And so what I've done is I've developed this little kit. Uh, and you can see it right here. It's a little box. And I've actually made it powered by the accessory jack of the, of the Mini Moog. Uh, I have to add two, uh, two jacks. This was already modified, so it already had holes. And this thing, it already had some wiring work done internally, which I redid. Uh, but since I already had a hole, I just put a gate uh, circuit in this one. Uh, some of these will have a gate circuit inside this box with a Sense Jones. You just plug into your Sense Jones and you plug into the CVN, the new modification, uh, just to save drilling holes on your classic instrument. Um, the benefit of this, though, is that there's another issue that comes up with this whole system. Okay, the open interface system with Moogs in general. Uh, Mini Moogs. Uh, struggle with this as well. Because you have to hit the note reference of your external synthesizer, that means your keyboard circuit internally is still active. Well, what if your keyboard circuit has bleeding, which is a very common issue I see on, on early mini moogs and or mini moogs in general, uh, random years. Uh, what if your what if your keyboard bleeds, which means you hit a note and then after you know a few minutes you start hearing it just kind of it starts slowly going out of tune and you have to keep re-triggering the note which happens. I see that too. Well this modification here, it actually bypasses your keyboard circuit. So it don't matter, I'll just give you an example, it don't matter what note I hit on this keyboard, it's just going to do a gate. There's, there's no contact with CV into your oscillator board. At the same time, I've also fixed it where your filter will track external CV using the actual keyboard control switches, just like you would if you had the keyboard active. So let me give you an example of this. So I've got the little MIDI controller set up. I got the MPU 101. As you can hear, and you can go even lower. You can go to where it's just a click. So 
that's the example. At the same time, though, you're hearing the oscillators. We can cut the oscillators off, and we'll go to make the filter uh, self oscillate. We'll hit a C note, uh, F note over here. I'm sorry, A note. Okay. We'll go up an octave on it. Of course, once you get to a certain range, your filter doesn't track exactly because it's a filter. It's not really a precision VCO. But uh, at the same time, these buttons here work. We cut tracking off all together. see that works really well and also when I built this module I built this module to actually be calibratable so you got actually a range and scale internally so you can adjust your, your for whatever synth you're using you can actually uh, tune it within the ranges of your external synthesizer uh, for instance I've even hooked this thing up to a ProMars which I got a video on my Instagram of me using the ProMars by Roland to control the mini Moog um, which is a one volt per octave system um, but uh, this really kind of opens up the system a little bit more, uh, especially if you're using MIDI or you're using another external CV source from a synthesizers.com or any other module or modular system. Um, this really gives you a good, uh, you know, a good control source. But uh, anyways, with that out of the way, I'm, I'm going to now go over your mini mode, Gavin, just kind of show you what's what's all uh, been done. And I'll also show you this too, guys. Uh, when I unplug the uh, controller. So for instance, I'm going to just unplug the CV input from the module. Now you got your keyboard. really well for for many octave ranges uh, this little module I built works really well um, but anyways now I'll just go over and show you the uh, the oscillators you already heard your filter track even though it was external you already heard your filter so we'll just go over the oscillators I'll show you how all the oscillators are working the wave shapes <laughs>
something I also did too for you, Evan, is I added the buffer board for your um, octave ranges. So now you've got the buffering circuits needed to make your oscillators uh, uh, independent when you turn the knobs. You, you won't hear another oscillator go out of tune when you start changing your uh, range footages. Um, but as you can hear, all your oscillators are working great. Your filter now sounds like a Moog filter. <laughs> Filter sounds great. Um, your noise source works. Oh, that's working correctly. Um, go back here. And of course, your envelope generators are working. I'll show you your filter first. There's a fast attack. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, fast decay. Here's a slow attack. As you can hear, and of course, same thing with your uh, VCA. So we'll turn the filter open. We'll make a slow attack on your uh, on your loudness contour. That's your attack. Here's your decay. Here, this thing will go a long time. It's a long time to fail the way out. And there it is. So you can kind of see how all that's working correctly. Uh, but overall it's working great. Uh, your, your glide circuit works. Go here and get a... switch. Uh, your pitch bin works. I did not do the dead zone mod on this one just mainly because our main focus was on getting everything to work with the modifications. Uh, but uh, your, your pitch, pitch wheels uh, well within spec. Uh, I did go in and recalibrate your pot to get it right in uh, the position it needs to be in. <laughs> Something else I did too is I tightened up the detent so it's a little bit more uh, tight within the center position. So it helps helps even though you don't have the dead zone, it does kind of help with that. Uh, your modulation circuits work. 
go ahead and use oscillator uh, 3 as a modulation source. So here we go. Now what you just heard there, you heard the noise source, uh, the red noise. As you can hear, all that's working correctly now. Um, I also replaced your pilot light for you, Evan. I knew that one was flickering really bad, so I installed a uh, new pilot light, and uh, it, uh, it's working great. So that's working great. Um, I'm using a power converter too, so I'm running about 220, 230 volts uh, with this particular unit. Uh, so when you get it back, it would depend on what your house voltage is. I don't think you'll have any calibration problems because um, I think it's well within spec. But uh, if you do have any, if you do have any voltage increase or anything, the regulators might be a little offset. So uh, you might have to do a little recalibration. But uh, besides that, it's, it's it's working great. There's no longer any problems with the. Uh, the chassis flex, I know that was one of the issues that uh, you had and uh, this is something that uh, I noticed right away out of the box when I got this thing in was if you had an oscillator on, sometimes the oscillators wouldn't work and that you could flex the chassis and it would kind of come and go I'll show you that that's all fixed now, we'll make this thing sustain for us oscillator, uh, frequency oscillator. As you can see. There's no issues. So I believe I got all the bugs worked out for you. All the issues you had with uh, connection points, cold solder joints. You had, uh, when I got it to the house after burn-in, or before burn-in, I brought it to the house and then vibration in my car it started acting up again and I found out that you had a uh, issue on your oscillator card with a crack solder joint uh, related to your voltage sensing lines and it was causing uh, weird problems as well uh, which would cause your pitch just to sit there and, and uh, fluctuate really bad um, as well as produce L film in the oscillators uh, from it was basically jitter or it was uh, it was uh, hysteresis in your in your uh, power supply that was getting to your your filter or your uh, filters and oscillators caused by that uh, voltage sense line not being accurate um, so all that's fixed now and uh, I don't believe you're gonna have any problems with this thing it's uh, I put it through probably about 12 hours of, of burn-in time uh, test time took it to the house played it uh, you know tried out all the mods with different keyboards make sure this modification would work for you made any tweaks I needed to make to the little module I built and uh, I believe it's I believe it's great but uh, anyways Evan thanks again I really do appreciate uh, the support here and uh, you allow me to work on your mini Moog especially the long haul over here all the way over here to the US I know that's uh, probably not a cheap fee but uh, I really do appreciate it and uh, I definitely made it worth your worth your while but uh, anyways guys thanks for watching appreciate all of you the, the support and uh, there'll be more updates soon for more projects take care